Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at some tips that I've learned over the years that you can use when building your own e-bike. Now not only do I think that these tips are going to give you a better e-bike to ride, I also think they're going to save you time and money. Now in my last video I went over choosing the right type of frame for your build, so if you didn't see that chaps, nip over there, check that one out as well, it's got some interesting tips in that which you might find useful. Whether you're converting a standard bicycle into an e-bike or you're buying a purpose-built e-bike frame um, for your build, there's a few things that they, we all have in common. And that is that we're adding weight. And we're adding batteries, controllers, motors um, to these bikes. Uh, and a converted bicycle is going to weigh uh, a lot less than one of them purpose-built uh, e-bike frames like I have. But with all that weight, one of the most important things I want everyone to think about when they're building their own e-bike is how to stop the bleeding thing. So, something you might want to price into your build is hydraulic brakes. And hydraulic brakes actually use a fluid or an oil inside the lines to stop your bike instead of a cable. More often than not, that fluid is either going to be a dot fluid or a mineral oil. So when pricing up a set of brakes for your build, you're going to want to check what fluid goes in the brakes and you're going to want to pick up a bit of that as well. And although your brakes will probably come with them, do yourself a favour and pick yourself up some spare brake pads. Now upgrading to hydraulic brakes does give you more power for stopping your bike. Um, I'll just let you know, for me, I did need something a bit extra um, for stopping mine because mine is a bit of a heavier bike. And if you think that you're going to need more stopping power, there is a few things that you can do like this. You can upgrade your rotors to your brakes. The bigger the rotor, the more stopping power you've got. And on my bike, I went from a 160mm rotor to a 203mm rotor. Now that means you're going to have to alter your bracket, what your caliper sits on, and I'll show you that right now. All you need to do is get an extend extending bracket there. And that's just going to bring your caliper away from your forks, allowing you to fit a larger rotor in. And I'll show you the difference from a 160mm rotor to a 203 It's quite a difference. And it makes a massive difference when it comes to stopping your bike. Now just so you know, I have only upgraded the front rotor and I'm still running a 160mm rotor on the back as it's the front rotor that stops you the most. And I probably will get round to upgrading that rear one in time. Now regarding your caliper brackets, there's two types. There's IS and post mount, different sizes. If you let them know what size rotor you're going for, uh, where you're getting them from, they'll let you know what bracket to use. Now for anyone what's going to be buying a frame like mine, or the other types of frames, you can buy what are purpose-built off-road e-bike frames. There's a few things you're going to want to be aware of, uh, and that is, they are actually slightly longer than a normal mountain bike and your brake lines are not going to be long enough. So when you're researching what brakes you're going to buy, um, it'll tell you what type of hose it uses. Now you can pick that hose up from anywhere, eBay or, or bike shops, um, and you'll have to buy the inserts what go in on the end of the uh, hose. So when you figure out what size you want, you're going to cut the hose, put your inserts on the end with the olive, um, that way then you're not going to have any leaks when you connect them to your caliper and your brake lever. Don't let this put you off though, um, if you're upgrading your brakes, a little bit of research and you'll soon find out that it is actually really easy to do. And also a similar problem you're going to have is also your rear gear cable what's going to go to your derailleur. On this kind of bike it's going to be a bit short so you're going to have to upgrade that and get a longer one. That's pretty simple, um, all you need to do is, is buy yourself a tandem gear cable uh, for a tandem bike. Obviously tandem bikes are a bit longer and you can just cut it down to what size you want and utilise that. And that brings me on to my final tip. Um, I keep going on about my bike being a heavy bike, which it is, um, which doesn't really make a, much of a difference because there's a 1500 watt motor on it. But I'll guarantee at some point, sometime, when you're miles away from home, something's going to go wrong. There's going to be a failure on something, or your battery could run out. Um, 
that might not be that much of a problem if you've got a converted mountain bike, what doesn't weigh quite as much as mine. But even in first gear, um, after a period of time, it's difficult to pedal my bike because of the weight. So what I ended up doing is I ended up installing um, a mega range freewheel cassette on the back. And you can see the size of that cog um, for first gear. Is going to make it so much easier to pedal if you've got to go any uh, great distance or if you've got to put a bit of power down to get you up a hill give your motor a lift um, that is really going to help you out and i find it helps me out a lot when i've just got to pedal my bike not that it happens a lot but i do try it out and um, it works brilliantly just bear in mind you will need a freewheel tool for getting off your cassette um, you can buy it from a couple of quid from almost anywhere I hope you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, it helps out my channel a lot, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.